All right, so we'll begin. Um, welcome to the first CLAC meeting of the year, of the school year. Um, I'm Jonathan Blank. I am one of the CLAC co uh, leaders. Um, Amanda DeSantis cannot make it tonight. She's got some personal stuff going on, so she won't be able to make it. Um, so I guess first we'll talk about the uh, ground rules. So this is a safe place. Confidentiality is expected. It's a collective discussion that is not intended to address individual needs, and due to FERPA, those issues cannot be discussed in this venue. Um, there's one speaker at a time, no sidebar conversations, and then please silence all cell phones. If you need to communicate, you're welcome to exit the room and communicate. Um, with that, I guess we'll go around the room and introduce ourselves. I'll start with myself again. I'm Jonathan Blank, one of the co-leaders. I have two children in the school system now. One moved on to college and uh, both of them, well no, only one, yeah, one has an IEP and one has a 504. I guess we'll go this way first. Okay, I'm Laura Potter. I have three kiddos in the district, um, one fourth grader in Compass, uh, one middle schooler at Davisville, and one fourth grader at Stony. I'm Jackie DiLorenzo. I'm the early childhood supervisor for the school department. Shannon Johnson, I am the uh, A Compass teacher, grades three to five at Hamilton Elementary. I'm Dr. Rachel Santa, I'm the director of special services. I'm Kendra Winnock, I'm the assistant director of student services. I'm Kate Mulvaney, I have two kids, um, one kid who's in first grade and the other who's in the integrated second grade classroom. Hi, Erin Earl, I am the school committee chair and the rep, uh, the liaison for this committee, uh, but I am also a mom. I have two uh, children at Forest Park. I'm Mary Lil Presti, um, mom of five children, um, parent slash disability advocate. All right, um, so next, uh, I guess we'll give Dr. Santa the oh. floor. Okay, so I have a couple of notes for you. The first one is that we're actually changing the name of the department from pupil personnel to student services. Um, we found that the word pupil is old and people don't really know what it means and we don't really like it. So the school committee supports us in that decision and we'll be changing the name to student services. Um, I know John's gonna talk about this later, but he did a fantastic job presenting to the school committee just to talk about what CLAC was all about. Um, we are, I presented before about the new programs we added into the district this year. Those are all up and running. We, I would say that we have some growing pains here and there. Um, but overall, they're running well and are um, mostly staffed. We're still looking for a couple of positions here and there. So we're still hiring TAs. Spent the entire summer hiring. But we're still looking for a few more. Um, and then I think the most exciting thing, at least in my mind, is the new curriculum that we're looking at. So our students who are on alternate assessment now have a brand new curriculum teach from Teach Town. The Encore, which does all the core subject areas, but also has social skills and some other components. And that's being rolled out, and I'm seeing students use it, and they seem excited. Um, we did a ride training, we're in support with the Rhode Island Department of Education project um, regarding math instruction, and we actually sponsored the training to be in district, and we had that for number worlds um, to be used at middle school and high school as well as the Alex, which is an online um, data collection, kind of like IXL, but um, um, a slightly different version. We also had uh, teachers, um, I can't talk tonight, sorry, um, participate in hands-on equations, which is how to visualize algebra. That was a very cool training. Um, we also had teachers including our Shannon here, um, participate in Wilson reading training over the summer and in the month of September. Um, at the end of October, we have uh, teachers who are participating in the swim for writing training that's specific, specifically designed for students who are in alt assessment on how to help them to generate their writing examples. Um, so those are, I think, all really kind of exciting. We are looking at doing additional Just Words um, training probably more um, after the beginning of the year. Um, and we have trained an additional, we trained almost every school administrator in the district on safety care, de-escalation, 
and we did another initial training of 20 people, and we have another initial training in a couple weeks. So we, we will have, at the end of that, about 150 staff members who are specifically trained in the more advanced part of safety care training. And all the staff have had an overview of safety care training for policy. I think that's all I have for you right now. We've been busy. <laughs> all right. Um, Anybody have any questions about that? <laughs> no? <laughs> so we'll move on to you. So the next thing on the agenda is the ESY update. Okay. Well, I don't have any yes. updates yet yeah. on ESY since we're so <laughs> yes. early into the school year. I don't think we, we, uh, we know too much about that at this point. Yeah. Um, we'll see how our students do, and then we make recommendations later on in the year. Um, I just think the only thing that maybe to add on to Rachel's um, update is that we did hire some additional support staff over the summer mm -hmm. so we added a speech and language pathologist position mm -hmm. for the district which is really exciting because one of our other speech and language pathologists already in the district who has specialty with students um, with life skills um, is really focusing on that population so that's been a really nice addition um, to have and then we also added an additional certified occupational therapy assistant um, and last year we also had a um, contracted um, school psychologist, which we've now hired for that position. So we're, we're pretty well staffed with related services. So that's mm -hmm. an exciting update. That's a great update. I forgot about that one. <laughs> so we're very excited. Just right to here. let you know that the speech person is what she's talking about training in, in assistive communication devices. And she is almost fully certified. She'll finish that certification with us supporting her in the spring. So we're excited about that, but she has a lot of experience. So she's going to be like traveling around to all the different. She does right groups? now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she she travels um, from Compass K over at Stony Lane to Compass at Hamilton to the high school Rise program. Can I ask a question? Like in just when you were talking about ESY, just made me think of it. Um, the last meeting that we had in June, the end at the end of the year. There was somebody, there was another person from the department? Julia Alfano, and she would have been here tonight, but she's sick. We don't want her here because she's sick. So what, what is her position again? She is um, a special ed coordinator. And she's an, it's an admin position on the grounds, and she works essentially with four different schools to um, LEA all their meetings, essentially. So that's not in place of Deb, like Deb Gardner. She's still Oh, gosh, no, no, okay. no. This, so this is a coordinator. She's like a me or Kendra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they came out of a need um, two budget cycles ago where the principals came and advocated um, to the school committee to get some additional support um, in those areas because there's laws about having an administrator in meetings and different things like that. And so the principals, especially at the schools that are the elementary schools and the smaller schools, um, they were in a lot of meetings that were taking time away from them being able to do other things. And so hearing that and, and working through it, um, we came up with this new position. So it's a completely newly funded position. New, that new to the, the district, not new in the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Yeah. Many, yeah. many districts have one per school. Yeah. We, we share the schools, and then Kendra or I also are at yep. the schools. Um, if a, if they're required, one of us is required to be there for any type of eligibility meeting because we're highly trained in that particular area, mm -hmm. and we're not allowing just uh, um, a norm like a typical IEP team to do that. But then Julie, in addition, will that will also help to um, cover IEP mm -hmm. meetings. I do that role on Thursdays for Hamilton, and then she does the other, yep. does DMS and. Kendra is at Whitford, Whitford Middle, and she spends all the time at the high school. Fishing mm -hmm. Cove also. And so Fishing so Cove, yep, sorry. I didn't want to forget about Fishing Cove. <laughs> there's one per school, and then there's one for the whole district? That, no, no, we, no, we don't no. have one per school. Oh. I was saying in the state, oh. it's very typical to have one per school. We don't have that, um, and I'm not asking for that. Um, we we kind of share the job, because <clears throat> we also have a high school coordinator. They're not an admin coordinator, though. That's Tara Walsh. Yeah, I'm not her. And then we have, of course, Jackie, who is a preschool um, early childhood supervisor, and then me and myself, and me and myself, me, Kendra, and Julie, who kind of take it on. And then the other change, um, the, you still have next steps. Light is it life skills that change the name to all the Soar? programs change their names? Can you just go just when sure? You're okay, absolutely. So um, next steps became Compass. Okay. Um, so the re let me give you a little bit of the reason why we changed mm -hmm. names. I really needed people to shift their mindset as to what the programs were. 
um, what I was starting to hear is, oh, that's a next step kid, or that's a this kid, or this is that kid. And really the reality is we change programming based on kids' needs every single year. So in order to shift mindset, we shifted names, and I had them name the programs. I, it, and so they're very cutely called them Compass. Mm -hmm. um, and then we originally were gonna have a language-based classroom that had been multi-grade for Stony Lane. However, um, in April <laughs> or May, um, we, it was April, I'll never forget it. We, <laughs> we started seeing this huge number of K kids that really needed a lot of support, so it became Compass K. They couldn't be added into that program. It would have completely overwhelmed it. So there's Compass K at Stony Lane, and then we have Compass 1 to 2 and Compass 3 to 5. Mm -hmm. At the middle school level, and I do have a description of all these. I can give them to you. At the middle school level, we added the Life Skill Program is now called Bridges. And we added a Bridges Plus program, which are students, which are students who are not on the DLM, but they're multiple grade levels below and quite can't access the curriculum at their at what their typical grade level would be. And then we added, so they're really more like half half time direct instruction, half time in regular environment. And then at what for middle, we added an intensive resource program. Right now, that's all sixth graders. And that is to kind of wrap support around students. It's not all six. Yeah, it is all six. sixth graders. Um, it's to wrap. It's Bridges Plus. It's not all sixth graders, <coughs> but um, intensive resource is, and that's really to wrap a person around a cohort of kids to make sure that they're performing well in all their um, core subject areas and kind of support them throughout their day. Um, Success Academy at the high school. Uh, is really more, they still may call it that, but it's really an intensive resource and we shifted how that was being staffed. In the past, it was essentially, you could, as a Success Academy student, you could have four different special educators or two special educators or three, depending on what classes you're in. Instead, we have one service provide, one special educator wrapped around those students, very similar to the intensive resource at Woodford Middle, and they've also been given the freedom at their request and written into the student's IEPs that they can support the kids in the core area, but they also have the ability to say, okay, Tay, I don't need to be ADLA, I'm gonna go into um, their, one of their elective classes because we found kids weren't doing so well in some of the more demanding elective classes. So they, this cohort of kids by grade level, ninth graders, 10th graders, and 11th and 12th graders are a group, um, have one special ed service provider that follows that cohort. Um, the life skills program is now called RISE. Reaching independence through support and education. Just have to remember, remember that one. And there's two versions of that, Amy Lee and Sid Sweeney's group. And then the transition program is now called SALES. So that is Skipper's Academy for Independent um, Living, which we think is really cool. And I like the image of what I don't, they didn't talk to each other, but if you think about that, the compass is kind of telling them where to go. Bridges, bridges over from middle school to high school. High school, they rise up and then they sail away. I like that kind of image. So at some time, I'll create a graphic. So that's, that's sort of the thing. So we added a lot or tweaked a lot of programming. I, what I didn't say is leaps no longer. There is no leaps. We made that an intensive resource program at Forest Park, and there's an intensive resource program at Quid. So we added, we took the LEAP teachers to make them intensive resource, and we added the teacher at Quid to create intensive resource. Those are students that need about <clears throat> two hours of academic support, plus you know speech and PT and OT, all the good stuff. Thank you. And I do have a description of that I can give you Could all. we have, or, or could like a high school kid that's doing like some kind of graphic art to make that? I could ask so them that to. That way you don't have to worry about it. I hadn't thought about it. Mm -hmm. I think Frankly, it's on the back burner of things to do, but yeah. I, I love a graphic of that. The, isn't that what you, we did for the um, brochure? <laughs> so we yeah. created the brochures, and then we gave them to Sid Sweeney, um, and the students in life skills copied them, and they cut them, and I think they took care of maybe not physically distributing them, but at least breaking oh, them up. to the schools? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know if they're, if yeah, they're doing know. that or not. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they can make graphic, graphic art, but maybe a kid at the high school that does that. Yeah, that's a good idea, good suggestion. It would be a nice opportunity if you were using like the graphic art students to present that as an opportunity to work with the life skills 
um, in creation. We've added several unified arts classes too up at the high school. So that's been expanded too, which has been nice. And um, we're supporting them in buying more specialized materials that they can use with the rep tech foundation students. That's another little change this year. I guess we did more than I thought. <laughs> when I started taking notes and I think, oh, oh yeah, I guess we did that too. <laughs> Um, but I do have a whole thing, uh, a North King Sound School Department for Team of Services. We didn't even talk about preschool. We added Bright Beginnings at, oh, I forgot two programs. Um, we added Bright Beginnings at preschool. Jackie can talk about, because she's next. Um, and then we moved a whole cohort of K-3 to students from Daysville Academy into Fishing Cove, and they called themselves Positive Pathways. So that's a behavioral program. That's so for preschool update, um, like Rachel just said, we um, really didn't add on, but we changed our programming a little bit. Um, we had to think outside of the box for the needs of the students we were getting. Um, and so we opened up one of our five classrooms as a full day, four-year-old um, direct instruction classroom. Um, currently, there are six children in that classroom. Um, and they have opportunities for integration into the inclusive settings in the afternoon. But they do a lot of their direct instruction, therapy-related services um, in the morning. Um, it's very um, it's very structured. Um, there's visuals throughout the whole classroom throughout the day. Each student has their own individual schedule, so it's very individualized um, for, for the students in there. And um, we had some growing pains, but we're, we're actually doing really well. Um, the teachers have come together and they have a, they have a really good plan. Um, in another classroom, um, it's just mornings, four days a week for our three-year-olds. Again, it's a direct instruction classroom. Um, currently, there are five students in there. I just enrolled another one um, this week. So there'll be six in that classroom. And it's the same idea as the four-year-old full day, except that these children are brand new three-year-olds who haven't been to school and have some high need that we need to kind of teach them some of the skills and then um, have opportunity for integration when they're ready. So those programs, we've got off to a really good start. Our other classrooms are still fully included. Um, our community peer side is pretty much full. I might have scattered three or four spots available morning and afternoon, but we're pretty much full. Um, and we started um, with all of our referrals. So right now for early intervention, um, birthdays between um, the period runs from July 2024 to June 30th, 2025. Um, so any of students turning three within that year um, is referred from early intervention. I have 31 students right now that were in referral who will be turning three between now and May. Um, as far as child outreach, Mary Nelson, our child outreach coordinator, um, she started going into state pre-Ks and Head Start, so she completed those child outreach screenings, um, and she is starting in the next couple of weeks to go into the community preschools to continue screening, and then um, she had sent um, letters out um, in June and July, so she's getting a lot of those families calling her. They're coming to Davisville Academy for their screenings. Um, and parents just randomly calling her for screening, so it's really good. Um, and right now, from Child Outreach, I have eight referrals um, on, on the books right now. So, um, yeah, we're busy, we're doing great. Um, we have a great staff, we're fully staffed. We hired some nice TAs that we needed in preschool. Um, I do have two teachers going out on maternity leave, so we'll be working on replacing them for a long-term sub um, in January. But, yeah, we're busy and we're doing really good. All right, so next is the introduction of Aaron Earl <laughs> as a school committee meeting here, uh, member here, and then uh, I guess the other part of that is that I had presented at the school committee meeting about what the seat like was. Yeah, and so that was part of our um, intentionality of trying to have the different advisory groups come to the school committee meetings. Um, the school committee members, like we each sit on different ones, but um, we wanted to be very intentional about bringing folks to the larger meetings to be able to hear about what folks are working on, and also just to give some visibility to those groups, um, just to, so that was, John got to go first. So thank you so much for coming. Um, just as a reminder, um, for the school committee, like the biggest things that we 
um, oversee <coughs> our policies and then also the budget. And so those are things that I always kind of remind folks about because I think uh, the general public doesn't know the differentiation between the administration and the school committee. There's obviously a lot of overlap. Um, but particularly for this group, um, you know, thinking about what policies might need to be looked at, tweaked, might not be working for certain populations of students. That's something that I could bring back to the school committee and refer to the policy committee to look at with the like expertise that's in this space, et cetera. Um, same as budget, as you've heard me, if you remember from last year, the budget process is very long and starts very early. And so for FY26, we will probably start that process, um, the administration and Dr. Duke will probably start that process like in December-ish, right, Rachel? That would be, yes. So another thing about thinking about, and that would be the budget that would affect next school year. So thinking about kind of things that we might need, things that students um, <coughs> might benefit from, et cetera, like those are now-ish, like now, October, November is a good time to have those conversations because that's another thing I could bring back to the school committee um, and the budget advisory committee that we just recently formed to be able to say, hey, like CLAC would like you all to think about this or it'd be really helpful if we had this. Um, and then that they can work that hopefully into the budget as we did. So um, anything else, John, that you want me to touch on? Um, uh, well, so if we were gonna come up with things for that, could we query like the teachers or? Like, well, so the, that Rachel does that part. Okay. Um, so this would be more like from, um, parent perspectives, family member, guardian perspectives, things that we might not be aware of. And can, it can be little things like, um, you know, uh, Swing at Hamilton was an example of like a, a smaller item that we were able to fund, obviously. Um, but then there's also, you know, possibly bigger things, like if you see other things in other communities that people are doing that, you know, like if, anything like that. So Rachel and her team, like the, the admins go through a whole process for like what the teachers need, et cetera. But this would be more like from your all's perspective of things that we might want to look into or consider. Um, and then we would work with the administration on like what might make sense. Um, and then same with the policies. Um, Rachel comes to our policy meetings um, as well as myself. Um, but also like if there's things that you all know from a different perspective, we can always look at those too. So we kind of like, it's a big circle like of kind of how we get feedback and, and how we move forward like with it so okay so for instance I heard you all talking last um, last time about training and things like that mm -hmm. so I budgeted a thousand dollars for select to use for you for bringing speakers or for mm -hmm. you to be additionally trained in something so I listen I listen for that yep. but if there's other things you just let us know and we'll, yep. we'll figure out how to, how to um, budget them yep. okay I could always to bring like if you have questions about things like why things happen why a policy is a certain way, things like that. I can always come and bring information this way too if you're curious about like, hey, why do we why do we do it like that in the district? Um, if it's something that the school committee has purview over, I'm happy to bring and educate um, this group on that as well. Um, and then also the school committee members are all elected officials and so we also have connections with the state delegation um, and the federal delegation and so if there's things at a, at a state level that needs to be advocated for, um, we do have mechanisms for the school committee can send resolutions and letters on certain things or um, you know we can connect with our local like elected officials too and see if they what's going on up at the state house etc so that's another kind of avenue of making change because some things aren't completely under North Kingstown's control it's a larger conversation with Ryder or the state but as elected officials we have pretty high connections with your state officials so we can help with that too one thing that when you bring that up that mm -hmm. I don't fully understand, and I don't know if you know anything about it yet, but the, um, maybe, maybe you are aware of it, but there's that the state CELAC or, that they mm -hmm. that became law, right? You know what I'm talking about? It's like a, um, I forget the name the of the- The Rice Act, Rhode Island Special Education Advisory Committee? No, it's a, um, oh. they voted it in like a year or two ago. Yes. And I, it's like an advocate. Yes, yeah. the ombudsman. Yeah, the ombudsman. That's the word. Do you know about that? Yeah, I do. Okay. So that actually, um, the ombudsman has not gone any further into legislation. Um, essentially, what was becoming another layer on top of what we already have with, within the Department of Ed. So instead, what they did was they put in a another solution before mediation, which is a facilitated IEP meeting. So if both the family and the district agree, you can do a facilitated IP meeting. 
um, where you have some a group from the state, I think it's one or two people can come and help to to try another IEP meeting. So like the ombudsman kind of went the to the then. side and they so went there is for no that. Ombudsman? That's no, not, that didn't happen. No, because what was at least that's my understanding, and I, my understanding of why it was sort of. Um, Put to the side is that it was starting to usurp what the Department of Ed's responsibilities were, and it wasn't really that's not really the intent. So they put in some other options so that parents can feel like they're being heard in a meeting and things like that. If it makes sense. Yeah. So it's like a it's just a way to get another IEP meeting. If it's to get another IEP meeting, maybe without. Um, so for instance. Do I attend a meeting where there might be maybe a conflict or an issue? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I'm just there because I run that meeting in that particular building. Um, but that's kind of what I do. I go in and try to listen and, and figure out a solution. Right? That, that's what we do. But what if I can't figure out a solution or people are thinking that I'm being biased in some way or there's some issue there? Then they can have another kind of um, person that doesn't know really any of the parties come in and help to facilitate another IP meeting. And then if that still isn't working, go to mediation. So they added a whole nother option. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing it's being fairly successful. We only had one request in the district, to be honest. But, um, in, but it was a request where I didn't even know the name of the student. I had never been invited to a meeting. I couldn't figure out what the issue would have been. So I called the family and said, hey, would you be willing, before we do this process, because I'm willing to do it, but would you be willing for us to have an IEP meeting with me in attendance first? And they said, sure. So we did that, and we were able to resolve it there. Um, I'm not even sure if they'd asked an IP meeting. I don't think they were quite aware of what it was, and I think they got an advice of, like, hey, this, you have this new option because they were upset about something. But once we all came together, we were able to resolve that issue. And I left it open. Of course, in the future, when you do that, I'm absolutely supportive of it. But if we don't need to do it, and we can solve it within here. It's a much lengthier process, too, so which is fine. Um, and as I said, open to it. but. If we can solve it at the table, I'd prefer to do that first. It gives us another op you know, another mm -hmm. option and then another option before you're at, you know, at the due process level. So yeah, so happy to be here and my goal will be to be at all your meetings this semester, or not semester, that's my other work for <laughs> this this school year, if you will. Um, and uh, if I can't, I'll try to send us another school committee member rep so you at least have somebody, but my goal will be to be at all of them. All right, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so the next topic is let's plan, and um, the first item on that is um, speakers for this year's meetings. I don't think we have any in mind yet. I haven't talked to Amanda about any. Um, I think maybe we could look for some if we have funding for them. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, sure. I guess this goes into the second one, the funding. Um, we really need to get some, I, I presented this at the school committee meeting. We went, uh, Mary, Amanda, uh, um, I forget the other woman's name that was with us. Uh, oh yeah, Amy. Amy, yeah. uh, uh, and Amanda, I, I think I said Amanda. We all went like nine years ago, I think. And uh, Mary moved on. 2016, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, or so eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been some pretty consistent <laughs> um, people, parents here, um, hoping someone would want to take the training uh, that would have to be in the budget of course for uh, yeah, yeah. I we have money for the training or whatever you Is essentially Franklin still doing the, the same I training? have not received any uh, yeah. usually you would get like a flyer I haven't seen any I don't yeah. know if I keep my eyes open for it there was a um, yeah, I'm not sure if they're still doing the formal well, training I mean I think they we can find out assistance yeah. yeah they must offer some level of support because this was one where we went for yeah I think it was two Saturdays like mm -hmm. all day and they were very thorough. I mean this was like one of the little suggestions um, But yeah, I think you might want to contact Lincoln on that John. Yeah, okay. well they were doing it um, When COVID came I remember they were doing it online and it wasn't mm -hmm. um, I don't even think they charged for it. I really don't know but it was something you could sign up for on their calendar um, So I don't know what they're doing now. I just know that was my experience mm -hmm. and, um, Anyway um, I haven't I haven't seen any new flyers for it, and usually they would send out and tell us, hey. I suspect though they might be doing one because there's a big uh, surge again of let's get CX more you know involved, get people involved, parents involved. So if they may be planning one, I just haven't received information yet. Have they come out with a date for the Sean dinner? Because that's usually at the end of October, beginning of November. I haven't gotten anything mm -hmm. in my email that I'm aware of. Okay. 
I know during COVID they had paused them and then they resumed. They resumed, yeah. And I think the first one they resumed, I want to say it was about in like spring of 2023, like in person. Yeah, I agree with that. And it used and then it was set up. If, I don't know if everybody is aware. Sean is, is SEA, is Special Education Advisory Network, and Amanda and I, Amanda DeSantis and I, pretty much went consistently to these dinners. Um, they would have them at Cellos and Warwick, and you would meet with. Um, CELACs from all around the state and they would often assign you to sit at a table with di districts either like in your area or like comparable size so we sort of got to know the people like from Narragansett I think Exeter West Greenwich I think after a while you get to know everybody and they have a speaker um, you talk about success stories and then you go around and kind of share best practices so if there's a district that is doing something that you know, is really taken, it's taken off, they share that with everybody. So it's just a nice way to network with people from around the state. Um, I'm gonna print, oh no, this is old. I was gonna say, I just found um, their find meeting it. schedule, but it's from 2020. Yeah, it's, not, yeah, it's old, yeah. I would think if they're like having one, they would have announced it by now. So perhaps they're just doing the spring so, one. So there's one on, well, on whatever I found from RI, Rhode Island SEAC, it says November, well, these are Rhode Island SEAC meetings. So they also over overlap. So members from the, the state advisory committee attend that one <coughs> as well. They do have a schedule here. So they're having a celebratory year. meeting, oh. uh, dinner in June 2025. I and saw they have that. a joint meeting with Sean in November. I'll print this. Oh one. yeah, it's there it is. Yeah, November 14th, 2025. Yep. Yep. So maybe it's they just have it. Maybe they haven't announced it. Yeah, but I would encourage anybody, even if you're it's good. not a leader, it just, I remember going, that's when I kind of got connected and then I decided that maybe I might want to be a leader, um, and which I did for a long time. Um, so I, I definitely, you know, and, and Rhode Island is such a small state that, you know, you can almost get to know everybody in the room or at least say hello to everybody while you're there. John, is your hope to get more people in attendance to this meeting as well as have parents trained? Is that? No, the hope is, I mean, we, I think we've always wanted more training. people to come, but we want more permanent members of the team, I think. So when we first started, we were all in the same class together, our mm -hmm. kids were, and um, we were in elementary school, or our kids were in elementary school. <laughs> and, um, we, you know, I think we had a lot more energy at the time, right? Like we were going to open houses, we were taking on, um, I would go to one school, Mary would go to another, and, and I would, if my kids went there, I think I went to the middle school and Stony Lane one year, and you went to Hamilton, and mm -hmm. we don't, we, it's just, it's just uh, Amanda and I now, and um, I, we have not coordinated anything, and, and um, I think it would help, be helpful to have some new energy from the elementary schools, uh, from the parents. Mm -hmm. I, I know there was a lot of consistent Parents coming in over the last two years, I think even that could um, that could tie back to your first one about speakers. Like if you're hoping to get elementary school age parents here, you know, and guardians, then maybe thinking about what speakers might be helpful for that age group because that might be a nice way to start bringing them in, and then they could learn more. You know, like so maybe you could be strategic with who we pick for speakers or trainings or even hosting like like a conversation with elementary school parents. You know, like in having a space that they could then feel like it's think, worth coming. I think having a safe space would yeah. be, I mean, yeah. you know, I've been a part of this for a few years and that's always been talked about, but it's never really happened. And so, yes, I mean, you know, how can we affect policies if we're not even connect, you know, connecting mm -hmm. parents? I mean, so these are great agenda items, but I just don't know how they're gonna happen if we don't connect parents. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I would hope that we would maybe brainstorm tonight even you know, what would be, you know, realistic um, to, to start that endeavor. I mean, I think, are there any elementary school parents that we know of that are really, like... <laughs> so, I, I know that I have, um, I can't say I've done it this week, but I've often said, hey, you, you really do a great job advocating for your child. Would you be interested in coming to see? Like, we give out the brochure constantly, <laughs> Yeah, but I don't, I don't think, think people really point. understand yeah. what it is and the purpose. I don't think they really understand. Even when you explain it, like, oh, I, I do so think, any ideas you have, we're willing to help support. I do think, um, I think the most attended one I 
came to was the one where we had social sparks attend. Mm -hmm. I think when you do have a speaker mm -hmm. and then the teacher can kind of talk it up and say, hey, I think you really should go to this because X, Y, Z, I think that that really mm -hmm. draws in more and more parents' um, involvement. So yeah, I think if we could think about we had, so we had some good attendance. I would say, in my recollection, the um, this is a few years back. This is actually when we were still meeting at Davisville Academy. Um, there was a speaker from the Autism Project um, who was a parent of herself of a child on the spectrum. And that was excellent. And I, I remember that being pretty well attended. Um, the anxiety I would say, one was really well attended. The anxiety, remember the anxiety oh, one? Oh, there was one, yeah, that was maybe our second year. I want to say, yeah. I don't think it was right the first year. There was, there was a speaker on, and that was um, whoever was the district school <coughs> psychologist, not Sherry Monaco still? Mm -hmm. It was you whoever was, school. Oh, was somebody who was, was before her. I know oh, it was, and I can't think of her name. No, she was in high school. But it was, um, she spoke on anxiety. And then this, the other side of it was a two-part meeting mm -hmm. about social media. Yeah, and and that, that room was full. We had, we've yeah. never had that many people. That was the most people I think we ever had. And, it, and it was Marissa Eisner that did that. Yeah. The, the vice principal. I mean, I think in, in my experience, the key is making a plan, getting a date, and getting the word out. Um, and I know everybody is super busy, and that was always a logistical thing for us, um, is getting the word, getting the flyers out to parents. I mean, it's too late to get them out for open houses, and I'm not sure what the individual schools do. Do the individual schools still do like weekly newsletters yes. for parents? Mm -hmm. So that's like could be an um, an opportunity yeah. to get the word, but to put it in like multiple weeks. But I would say the Autism Project has mm -hmm. some really great programs, kind of some, like so they they have social groups. Now I do know they're located in Johnston. I don't know for for parents logistically if yeah. no, we're not going there. If that's <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe they can come to us. Yeah, I mean. Um, Oh, the speak they, yeah. they, they could have a speaker. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, as a parent, down. like even yeah, like I feel like adding time to the journey is not going to help us. You know, like even coming yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, they would no, come I'm, here. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they would come yeah, here. Yeah. If you, for example, but I do know that they offer a social skills group at yeah. their location mm -hmm. and, and, a, and a number of I other programs. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So they were. They yeah, that was else. really well attended. Oh, okay. um, we did one. I had early intervention. Remember the one we had a panel. We had a pretty good attendance. Oh, from the different. Um, we talked about the um, the referral process. Yeah. From Part C to B. Mm -hmm. So I had early intervention there. They did a panel. Parents were able to ask questions about the referral. We had handouts. Because um, again, I I come across every meeting day families that are new a to the district and b to this whole process. And so um, at the referral meetings, I'm explaining the referral. I don't want to get too far ahead with eligibility, then IUP. So I try to like do it in pieces for the parents because it's a lot of information. They're coming in with a lot of information, um, EI they've been with. So just that whole beginning stages of the referral, I know that was well attended too. It was at DA. We should do something like that every year, right? There's always yeah. going to be a... <laughs> oh, you could do that. Right. We could have, I had Alicia Sharpentier for PD for the staff yeah, do a whole thing on sensory processing that was mm -hmm. well received. She did um, she could do that. I think one, one, one year. year. Well, I'm sure she'd be willing yeah. to come back because and do that. Virtual during COVID. Yeah. I yeah. Say. yeah, she was virtual she during COVID. That. Alicia did. Yeah, she did a really nice job. Yeah. Just yes. on like about a 45 minute session. Yeah. Um, we could have Dr. Oswicki come and talk about childhood trauma or anything having to do. She's a prominent adolescent pediatric neuropsychologist that consults to the district. She often can come and do any number of presentations that you want, including how trauma affects or social emotional or anything along those lines. Yeah. And I think if you have a big name like that, like to get it out there, mm -hmm. and I think like just to give parents enough time like to plan for it. Plan for it. Um, and you, how many meetings do you have scheduled for this year? Five. Okay. I, I don't, I oh, have to look at all of them. Okay. They're, they're all predated, like yeah. they're all the way through June, right? And the next one's uh, November 21st, <coughs> I know that. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how the January. dates are. January, yeah. Okay. One of the things five. the school committee is trying to do as well is we tried to book all our meetings mm -hmm. for the full calendar year um, so that, and then are advertising them as a cohort. So we're trying to say like, hey, these are all the different advisory meetings that are happening, including CLAC, mm -hmm. so that they get the, 
they all that they can get the information and then they're all on the district calendar now. Yep. So okay. that way we're trying to be better about communicating those, which sounds so simple, but mm -hmm. is actually an improvement in, in mm -hmm. their past practices. So, yeah. so it's 11, 21, 1, 8, 2, 26, 4, 9, and 5, 14. So it's 1, so 2, six. 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep. So I'm going to bring this up and I, I don't want to like pick on any group. I think over the years that we have been here, I think that some of the parents in the district who may not necessarily have childcare, um, don't, you just don't see their faces here. And I, I threw this idea out, and I, I know this is a great location, but I also had talked about if, if there is a particular community, like I, I think of the folks like over at Crossroads, mm -hmm. I, you know, I just can't imagine when it, trying to get childcare and get to a meeting, would the group ever consider doing a meeting like bringing a meeting to like say a community room somewhere, not necessarily having it here in the um, administrative building. And would that allow more people to attend? And to have childcare, like to have someone. Or like, um, I know Heritage Village has like that kind of community. Yeah, room. where it would be easier for people um, yeah, and I don't know how to, I mean, the child care, maybe it's something organizing through, is there, like, for example, could somebody for their senior project, like, they're, I'm sure the kids are always looking for ideas, what's a way to meet a need in the community and to maybe offer something. You, sometimes, I don't know if students do that for senior projects, but sometimes, uh, like, at churches and things, they'll organize, like, a child care night so parents can go Christmas shopping. So, I wonder if we I, could get, um, Chris McGrain students to do something to help out because they, they run that respite care of the nursing students. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the past, I have had, in another district, I've had um, offered babysitting during the meeting, yeah. and then we ran, like, um, arts and crafts mm -hmm. and things like that in a separate room. I will say that very few people participated even with that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as doing it in a completely different location, we have no problem doing that. However... We, part of the things that we talked about last year, correct me if I'm wrong, John, is that we wanted um, to tape this meeting. Mm -hmm. And to do that in another location was hard. Okay. That was also something that because somebody requested taped. on the Facebook page. Can, yeah. can you live uh, stream it? And I think what we ended up doing was taping it. And then yeah, we can't live stream because of the, the rules around subcommittees, that's my understanding. Um, that's not completely true. Okay. Um, it, it, it to live stream you have to have staff like we have to bring in additional staff and so we kind of tried to draw the line of like we, we live stream the school committee meetings and then we tape the advisory committees mm -hmm. just so that we're not putting additional strain on the IT department to have to have folks here like almost every single night of the week yeah. in, in addition to their other jobs so I think that's that's the barrier there yes. it doesn't mean it's impossible it just we had to kind of think about like legally all we are required to do is have public meetings we actually don't have to stream them or record them um, but to try to give access, we tried to increase it, but we that's where we drew the line, basically. Can we do like virtual participation? So there are interesting laws about that. Um, and so you can't do a full Zoom meeting. I think you can do, do citizens' comments, maybe virtually, but it, there's definitely some weird laws. And I'm not, we've been trying to figure out how it connects to this particular group too, about like, is CLAC the same as other public meetings and, and things like that. So that's on my, it's actually, I was just looking at it on my outstanding items list because we still are trying to wrap our heads around like what, what options there are. Okay. You know who might have an answer to that? Because um, Sir Ripon um, mm -hmm. sponsors these Sean dinners and the one that I went to in the spring of 2023, I don't know if it was Cumberland or East Providence, it was one district that was really, they were getting a lot of participation and they had the virtual option. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, I we looked into that, yeah. and I don't think it's something. I'll, I, it's on my list. I will continue to. Yeah. That was when it was still yeah. was in Cumberland yeah. that we did it virtually, and we did get better participation. But it was um, right when it was still following the yeah, COVID that rules, law and you could the do law that. changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the law changed, and we couldn't do that. But we, I did. It was on the list of things that I brought to our state senators to advocate for because there mm -hmm. are groups that get exceptions, and I feel very strongly that this group should have an exception. So I am advocating for that at the state level, but that takes time, and as you know. So. Do you know Tina Spears? She's not in our district, but mm -hmm. I don't know. She's a, she's in district. Does anybody know Tina? 
Chicago. She's in District 36, and she is really a um, special ed disability advocate. Mm -hmm. of, um, she had been a parent of a child who um, was disabled, and so she is also the executive director of Community Provider Network of Rhode Island, which is located right here over in um, you know, the Meadows mm -hmm. office complex. And so that might be a particular avenue mm -hmm. for, you know, proposing yeah, yeah. legislation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Our, our, I would say our, our North Kingston reps are also very supportive. So and not, not, I would say yeah. that's great to know. And yeah. it's yeah. not that we have any apprehension. There's just a lot of things mm -hmm. out there. So, but I'll, I'll recircle on that. But I do think to the point of trying to get more folks involved, especially John, knowing your concern about like, People to take over this group as your children are graduating and you know like they're you know I totally understand that I think for me as a younger parent of children like I think it's figuring out like what are their needs and going backwards so not saying like oh we know this speaker but thinking about okay what do we know about elementary middle school or even high school parents and what are their questions or needs or commonalities that they might want to get more information about or get educated more on and then say okay these are the things we might want to tackle this year. Who could we bring in for that? Like, instead of going backwards, like, I think if you start with, like, what parents actually need. Like, I just text one of my friends, which definitely broke the ground rules, but it was for good, I promise. Um, and I said, hey, like, what, I said, what would, you, what speakers would get you to come to see that? Like, she's aware of it. She knows you exist. She's got, a child cares hard, like, single mom energy. And, but, like, what would get you here? Like, what would help? And so we'll see. But, so maybe it's even surveying folks to see what they might be interested in or, or in need at this moment. Because it could vary from, from year to year. And we could also try to, like, have an elementary one and a yeah. middle That's school one. I mentioned not. last year, I think that you might be able to have better targeted speakers if you had this yeah. particular group we're targeting. We're going to do our early childhood, elementary, Middle transition. Um, is pretty much a standard, right? That that's every. We I think we were doing that. Maybe John, re, uh, refresh my memory. Was that like in the spring we used to have transition? We'd have Carrie Collins and you yeah, probably do, remember yeah. some of the names, yeah. Rachel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Natalia. Natalia. Yes. Yeah. And I think that was in the spring. So that's. Mm -hmm. That's a helpful did you ever do one on like estate planning and things like that? We did have a, a early lawyer, on, early or a financial on. advisor, right? Yes, financial that was. Advisor. I want to yeah. say like, but, but that was like eight years ago, yeah. like in in the fall. And then Actually, there was somebody who talked about was pretty well attended when I've done that in the past. Yeah. And they talked about like the able accounts. Um, yes. Able accounts. They talked yeah. about. Um, they talked about tr building up trusts, doing trusts. They talked about um, power of attorney versus guardianship and. Things like that. Offshore accounts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, mean, I, think, I said that to my accountant. She didn't laugh. I think too. Like I think I think the educational piece is is big, but I also think the the piece of your mission about like the community building is really big. Like just having other parents or guardians to talk to about like how hard it is to get your kid to do homework. It, like you're you know like just things that like maybe your friends don't have those those challenges with, but like you would love to he talk and commiserate and hear from other family members about whatever the topic, I picked that one randomly, but you know what I mean? Like, I almost wonder if there's a space to, in addition to having professionals come in, but like to say, and you don't have to tape everything you do for your meeting. So you could tape presentations, but you could not tape conversations, you know, or whatever, you know, like, so there's options there too, as far as like your confidentiality and making people feel safe in the space and stuff. But I do think, that that's something that's lacking, at least for, for my perspective, of like people to talk to about just like helping your kids navigate like systems like this. Um, so maybe there's something like some sort of elementary conversation thing, come meet other parents kind of vibe too. Wow. To so one of, one of the things that Cumberland did that was pretty successful also is, is beyond the, the these type of meetings, they would have more informal meetings like, like coffee gathering. shop yeah. meetings mm -hmm. parent to parent mm -hmm. without yeah, us being ones. here yeah. because yeah. sometimes I think people are afraid to they, they might be they, not that they would ever complain about us but I'm sure there's complaints that or you sometimes just want to vent and you don't necessarily you don't want to make the people feel bad that you're venting and you about. Know, we're not going to yeah. feel bad about but you don't want to necessarily do that in front of us so they were having little coffee coffee shop meetings and things like that much more informal and they had mm, several parents that would attend I think so you did just something like that. You did like the did summertime. Two, let me see. Yeah. You did 2021. Yeah, 2021. That fall, we did a coffee 
I want to say it was like early, late September, early October. Um, and we did it down at the town beach because oh, nice. we had to do something outdoors. That's what it was because it was still COVID. So we did that outdoors um, down, um, you know, where they had like the picnic tables, etc. Yeah, nice. We just and we had some people. Our fishing cove, remember that? Oh yeah. Right was in the that? cafeteria in the like right in the morning after the yeah, students arrived, right. the parents came in. Yeah. Yeah. So that might be a good one to to show the process of special ed, maybe. Yeah. Was yeah, that I before mean, COVID I that we did? That was before. That was. That's I what believe. I thought. The fall. That was that the was fall before, before COVID. COVID. Yeah. yeah. And there were some new faces at the one in 2021, but then I don't know if people like left the district, but I just never saw any of those parents at any more CLAC meeting, so, and I don't know, maybe I, I would say that and that was it? There, there was, you, you've been coming, and you've been coming, and there's a couple other yeah. mothers that were coming consistently over the last strong, two years. strong yeah. team at Compass and, and Hamilton, um, mm -hmm. and I think the only thing was is the time change, because I know we were looking at what the initial brochure was the Wednesday date, and um, I think it was really short. Um, oh yeah, this for one. For today, this yeah. One, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because but, otherwise, I do believe. That I, th I think what what it was Rosh Hashanah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So we were asked obviously to reschedule that. Yeah. So, so, back to the speakers. Yep. <laughs> I think I think it might be easier to look in, internal to the schools <laughs> with some of the ideas we had, like for the next meeting in November. Um, do we think that panel might be something doable, or is that like too big of a thing? Oh, for early intervention? Yeah. I could make some calls tomorrow and see. Okay. And then, um, is there a better time of year for that particular one? I don't know. What would the goal of that would be? Sorry, I just, I got lost in the conversation. Um, just to kind of address parents' questions about the transition process from Part B to C, mm -hmm. from early intervention to now um, early childhood special education. Um, and services in the school department. Mm -hmm. um, Would you be able to invite the 31 people you had on, that you have kind of between now and, like, because that's a more targeted audience, right? The well, yeah, folks, so, the yeah, we're doing a ton of 30-month meetings now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that was kind of, I they would target those, yeah, target those families that mm -hmm. are in it right now. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I had a meeting today, and um, we found the child eligible, and then the mothers and I, you know, talked about the, the IEP process, which is going to be the next meeting. And then she had like all these questions about the IEP. And we were already like 40 minutes into the meeting because we did eligibility. So we were reviewing evaluations and whatnot. And I said, you know, that will come at the next meeting. I'll have all the information for you. She was talking about services, the duration, where are they happening? So there's a lot of questions that come up um, for these new families um, that haven't been through the process. And it's hard to do it all at a meeting because um, I don't want to give them too much information because they're already kind of overloaded. But yeah, that would be the purpose is to kind of show them and bring them through the referral process from 30 month referral eligibility IEP. I think that is the single um, scariest or mm -hmm. point for parents, right? Mm -hmm. Is they're entering this world that they don't know mm -hmm. anything about, mm -hmm. they feel very like. Unprepared, well, right? Six months prior to the child's birthday, so yeah. there's and still it's, it's two just and a whole half. new language, right? It's yeah. a whole new set of expertise that they don't have, mm -hmm. right? They know their kid, but they don't know a whole system of stuff. So for them, for them to be able to start a community or to go and see that there's other parents that are going through this, like I think that would help, like at that very vulnerable stage for parents. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a tremendous asset for mm -hmm. them. That, that's why I started coming to these meetings. I, I, I went to a ripen one, one day I just like was like, what is going on with this? And then I went to Ripen and then I don't even know how I found out about Ripen, but then they told me to come to the town's meeting and I looked it up and then you it was like a ragtag you know like thing then right It was like three people and Dr. Carson but I think that like I love that idea but it's so niche like like if you're trying to bring in folks I was trying to think of topics that like a large variety of of parents would you know like like because like that one like if that's not where you are in the time zone like the time like you wouldn't that wouldn't be beneficial well that's why I asked is there yeah. a better time of year for that or is that a, but I feel no? like referrals happen we get all the time all year round 
getting referrals up into the last I'll, 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 I'll be honest with, with you. I would rather this be an informational thing like that instead of yeah, worrying right. about how many people we get. But I would like new members, <laughs> you know, but maybe that would help get some members because then the parents will meet like we did, you know, like that are all in the same. And that is how we group. might gain momentum. Yeah. Um, it's like I said, referrals can happen at any age. Um, so yeah, so it could be just like a new. It could be just new faces um, coming in, you know, beginning of the year. Maybe they have something. I mean, that's another thing. When So when I am doing meetings and I present the CLAC brochure at every meeting, I explain it. But they're already. There's so much information already coming at them, like you said, Kate. Like there's just so much, and I don't think they really are ready to, to like even understand what it's about. But if they actually came to to one of our meetings in this type of form, and we had early intervention here, I don't know. I wouldn't want to overstep my boundary or anything, but I mean, I I know the first meeting that I came to, I remember talking about having some sort of like peer mentorship or a pe like a peer, a peer, peer mom, peer mm -hmm. parent. And I mean, I am willing to help out with, you know, coffee chats, I'll, I mean, I will do that. So that'd be awesome. Yeah. Whatever, if we are on board with that, I would be, be happy to do that. You I'd be happy that. to do that. You and Kate, would you join me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the two of us. Okay. Great. Okay. We'll, we'll just talk to each other. Yeah. If no one else shows up, we'll have a great coffee. Okay. So I, I can tell you that in my past, there was two meetings that had the most amount of attendance. I'm talking about tons of people. One was there was a, a shift in policy regarding preschool, and I don't even remember what it was, but it was here in NK. And all, a whole bunch of people were oh, that, mad. That, that, that was when and they, they did came the, out. <laughs> that know? was when they did the full day kindergarten. It might have been, but yeah, it seems like when you really make a group uh, mad is when they come to the meetings. <laughs> um, so that's when they is all that our goal? Don't mad. <laughs> <And then laughs> that would not, not be how mad. I would want to get people together. And then another time when I think I misworded how I invited people, but it was essentially how they interpreted it is you're changing special ed, almost like I'm getting rid of it. And said it was an update of what we're doing for special ed, and a whole bunch of people came. So the only thing I know to really get better attendance or more people attending is to make people mad. But I prefer not to do that. I, I like the mix of having some general, so like a sensory yeah. topic. Mm -hmm. when, when you're talking about like yeah, a sensory, absolutely. like sensory is appropriate for every age, right? Mm -hmm. And like every student could benefit from mm -hmm. like in, incorporating sensory. So like if there were some general speakers, and then mm -hmm. I was thinking about how you there's been this kind of regrouping of students um, in the district. And so some of those are kind of like um, groups of students with parents who are like kind of similar needs, right? Or like are similar concerns or are navigating the same things at the same time. Like um, my son is in like a slightly different, like he's not in any of those programs, but he uh, has a lot of sports <laughs> at the school. And so there's also, you know, of figuring out um, like, uh, what are a lot of I know that there's all these rules about what you can say like um, why do most kids why are most kids in special ed programs at North Kingstown is it for like autism related is it ADHD related you know so if there's some of those big which I presume are kind of maybe bigger chunks of kids maybe there's ways to um, have speakers related to you know like you were saying the autism project right or some of the projects where um, it might connect across a lot of the programs um, more generally mm -hmm. Like focus, hmm. focus on numbers of what we know um, kids' disabilities are in the but, district. I don't yeah, know. but like I'm not trying to call um, kids by disability either. But. Yeah, but yeah. I need like and even, burdens are not by. Disability. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. that's what. I mean, so I was yeah. trying to say both. It's like a, like yeah. even we could do something. Maybe the safety care trainers something on de-escalation techniques because I'm sure a lot of parents yeah. wonder like yeah. what are some de-escalation strategies they're using in the classroom that they could carry over at home. And they would yeah, it know could be similar. Ones. So one thing I didn't say about safety care is that um, um, Joe, who's one of the trainers, I'm also a trainer. Uh, Julia Fano is also a trainer. Marissa Eisner is a trainer, and Colleen Laughlin are trainers. Uh, but Joe has a little bit more flexibility and time, so he's going to each of the um, faculty meetings to do an overview of the, the strategies that we're using within safety care which are essentially help prompt and wait. So he's doing that a little bit more of the background to every faculty meeting. So that'd be something that we could do in this meeting. And it 
it's it's designed to be a package of like an hour under an hour. So that would be that's a, good a great one. idea. What about for November? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I think they do it. What about for November? One of those sweet. I think we could do that for November. Yeah. It's done. It's, it's completed. Yeah. We worked on it. So what was the safety? Safety gear. It's de-escalation strategy. Safety gear is just a system we use. Yeah. But the de-escalation strategies, we wanted to do more in depth with all staff, just talking about how do we, That's a, I mean, how do we help to de-escalate students? How do we, what strategies are we using? Things like that. So you would talk to the parents here about that? Sure. Okay. That's what I wasn't sure. It could sure be a, a, a topic, to and they either might give myself a joke or come. I'd probably have Joe because people. Do you like that idea of like learning what <laughs> techniques are used at school so that you can mirror them? Like we, I, I really don't know like what what tricks and tips you all are doing. I don't know what. Yeah, but then also just like learning some things too to just even if it's not exactly what you all are doing at school, but like yeah. to be able to deescalate. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. kids are just is helpful in life. Like just yeah, to be able to deescalate yeah. anyone is helpful. So probably every parent at some point. Yeah, has <laughs> yeah. Some of these everybody's been carrying their kid under their arm at the baseball field or whatever. And the okay. whole time I'm in safety care, I go, I can use this at my school. I'm <laughs> <laughs> crying and screaming. <laughs> this strategy applies. So it's like it helps literally any age. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm looking at like your what sure. we do too. Because like sharing one of your like bullets is like sharing information regarding resources in our community, but then also like sharing, um, like, like sharing ideas and concerns, mm -hmm. like about the special ed programs and addressing unmet needs of students, faculty and staff. And then there's the law piece and then like understand, increasing understanding and compassion, et cetera. And so like that kind of fits in that, like education and ideas like as aspect. That, like when you're thinking about like okay what do we do and then like okay how do we accomplish those things this year like you could probably tie some of your things like back to those so we want to do yes yes we only have about seven minutes officially i want to make sure we i'm thought it was eight oh, it was 8 15 i'm sorry i thought it was eight okay we have plenty of time okay i just um, um i'm going to reach out to joe who's doing that that training just to have a different voice and see if he, he's willing to do that november 21st Okay, and, and then, then we, we can want to still do that panel again? It sounds like a good thing to do every year. It's up to year, you guys. Right? You just like, let me know. Yeah. I really like the idea of Alicia, too, doing this one. Yeah. Thing. Like she's great. There's a woman who's a trainer, Ariana DeAngelis, at Autism Project. Mm -hmm. She offers really nice trainings. She's on YouTube. She has a beautiful little training that I've sent to people. Um, I don't know. I could email her if you want me to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's part of it too. Like, when you're thinking about like resources, like getting information out and resources, like there is a cohort of parents and guardians in this district that are never going to come here, but like would very much if you're posting things on Facebook would like absorb them. Would like if you put something in the fun flyers would benefit from them. You know, so it doesn't uh, yeah. like so passive engagement is still engagement. Like you know, it doesn't always have to be like mm -hmm. if they don't show up, it, it's not working. Like if you have like a a YouTube thing that's really cool, like yeah. get, having yeah. to like get that yes. out, and then having the school department and the school committee, like, for lack of a better word, like retweeting it, you know, like resharing it could yeah. be beneficial just to get like word and information out. So mm -hmm. that's like another approach that you all could think about too, is like the resource piece and like how, how can we do like how do we do that? Like I, I um, would... we have an educate CLAC page. Yeah, the Facebook right? page. We, we we I mean Mary's always sending um, mm -hmm. stuff to Amanda and I to post, and then uh, we post stuff as we see it. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, we don't have a Twitter or, or what was it called, an X. X? We don't have a. We don't have any other social media. I know that. No Insta. What's that? No Instagram. No. I think that all of the pictures are just people sitting like in a board meeting. The Facebook page reaches a lot of people. I know. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, does. Yeah. it would be good to have like a like a technology person or just a, like a social media person. Somebody to get the flyers. Uh, not me. Not me. I've Wait, got ideas. But I she, you sent. She has wonderful resources. I just sent them to Shannon. And, and I follow her so much. Yes, but somebody who could like kind of collect those uh -huh. and then maybe break up the speaker, so you don't have one person responsible for um, reaching out to and scheduling the speakers. Like somebody might take a speaker. Like take this, a month. Yeah, and just yeah. divvy divvy the work up. Um, because everybody's busy. I, I don't know if I'm in love, but I, I don't mind doing Facebook. I, I know Facebook. We 
pay you back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind. So that'll, that'll take me no time. Is, I don't mind. If my understanding, oftentimes, what you see on Facebook <laughs> is like parallel to what's, if you have Facebook, it also, and Instagram. Yeah, it, they're, the they're not quite the same. Pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to post You're a in. lot of what you sent. All right, good. Right. I'll, send I, I'll, I'll okay with you. But I mean, we can, I, we can probably make an Instagram account from it. Right now, we have a Facebook I don't even know what it's called. It's a different app. It used to be like Facebook Business or something. Uh, now it's um. And the Meta. It's called Business Suite, is what it is. <laughs> but I can give you access to. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. It really won't That's take long. So yeah, I don't mind. You, you have the Facebook set up pretty well, like what, because it's public. Like people don't have to have Facebook to see it. They can still access it and stuff. Like mm -hmm. if you, yeah. like what like yeah. whatever you've done, it's set up pretty well. And I really do like the idea of the principal. Um, the Absolutely. weekly, I already, I already yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, that's that my, that's a great place. I, I read them. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. What was happening? Well, and I think though, one thing you have to remember is there's a almost entirely new administration. Like, like, like obviously there are some folks that are still, but like we're we're talking probably twenty in the past two years, right? And so, like sometimes, like, and and you have such a good advocate in Dr. Duva who is who grew up through special education, right? That was his trajectory to be a superintendent. So I think it's not, it's just maybe if for things that were working, just reinvigorating them. Like I wrote down, like ask the, ask Dr. Duba to ask the principal to put a notification in every newsletter about CLAC. Like that's, I think he'd be like, yeah, no problem. I'll tell it at the next admin meeting. You know, like, so there's some little things or like get the word out about Facebook. You know, like we could make a Canva flyer and get that out if you want to increase this membership. So I think it might just be like a combination of like change in administration and COVID that kind of probably stalled some good practices that were happening that maybe we could just very easily like reinvigorate for you all. And if there was one person, like I don't know if that's like Julia, the admin person, who could make sure that gets in because we were finding that we were individually reaching out to each of the schools, we the leaders to do that. Yeah, Mr. You Mr. Mezzanotti is the, the main contact for the principal, so I would imagine it could go yeah. through Yeah, so just, yeah, just to kind of like funnel them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, like so that I, that one I can I can talk to them about. And it sounds like you have a social media person. <laughs> well, and I think too, like how you like advertising things. So say you do do the de-escalation one, like creating some sort of flyer or some sort of thing. So it's not just see like meeting, but like something that can help like folks know yeah, that. And like, Kate helped with that a lot last year. Too, yeah, with making flyers. Yeah. 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 And I don't know, this may be a Rachel question, and I, I don't know what the, um, I, I don't even know if it's privacy stuff, but when we used to, remember a number of years back, we would try to get information sent out and about meetings, but we were told it could only go to like those families who had an IEP or a 504, um, to which I argued, well, you may not have a child in that category. So it was a very limited database it was like the special ed database, so it wasn't going out to everybody. I don't see any reason why it can't go out to everyone. And last year we got them in the fun flyers, which are like the mm. events going on for everybody. They, they, they were willing to put them in there. You can have questions about the special ed yeah, process, if you're interested in maybe making yes. a referral, but you're not sure if it's appropriate. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? You don't have to I don't think that would have be the current students. practice. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. that was definitely, it was just a limited, yeah, I don't, it was a I limited don't, group. I don't anticipate okay. any communication outreach challenges based on like you all maybe a family like maybe a family that they like their child might need an IEP yeah. or 504 and yeah. it's like they would be outside of that I don't think population I don't anticipate getting the word out okay. about things Rachel to be a barrier with okay. the current administration right to get information no John what Excuse system me. do I take off like that we had middle steps like, I made a flyer, and then it had to go to you, and then it had to go to someone else to go to someone else. Like, can I skip steps for you? <laughs> so you don't have flyers? To take, yeah, so you don't have to take on the burden of it all? Like, I, I okay. thought that what we were, what you did was you sent it to Amanda and I, and then yeah. Amanda would send it to... Um, a flyer? Yeah. Um, <coughs> okay. uh, she would send it to Joni if she wants yeah. to. Yeah, fun we flyers. send it out fun, fun flyers. But the fun flyers are, there's, there's different things that, different ways to get information out. The fun flyers are good for, I think that, Fills the need of like external groups who want to send stuff to the school department in it instead of like lots of different emails going out. It's one email. A notification about a internal group, 
like CLAC or a different advisory committee trying to get the word out about something that's going to be benefit students is different in my opinion. And so we can talk to Dr. Duva about like what his thoughts are on being able to send a specific email out for something or, you know, like we can work through that. Because there's a difference of getting, like it gets buried within the 40 flyers about everything else. So we can, I'm, I'm happy to talk to Dr. Duva at my like weekly meeting about that. Was, that is an issue that yeah. used to come up because oftentimes people would think, oh, fun flyers about summer camps or, yeah. you know, cupcake fundraiser and wouldn't, yeah, I, I, understand, so the, I, understand the, I understand the assignment. I will mm -hmm. yeah. put it on my list. Um. So the next thing actually was flyers. <laughs> do you, Kate, do you still want to do that this year? Yeah, I can, I can make, <laughs> but I'll commit to flyer making. <laughs> Is Michael Waterman still with the district? Wasn't he like the no. website person? Okay, so who does the website for the district now? It depends. The clerks. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, so if you had, if this group needed anything updated, how probably Chaz would update it too, or Andrew. Yeah. I, I mean, my my guess would be they that they could send it to you and then yeah, you would just update it. Yeah. So yeah. they don't have to go directly to staff. That you the next yeah. I think I think Amanda put that on there, and I'm I'm not sure why, but I've always been able to find this. Maybe I'm maybe Amanda had trouble finding. It. I've always I've always been able to just well. I, I, w I will say, I don't know if I went to the school committee site and then went to it. I, I know I Googled um, uh, like NKC lack and was able to get mm -hmm. to that. I'm not sure if it's under the school committee though. Once you, if you just it is, it, but yeah. it hits CLAC, it does come up mm -hmm. to search for it. No, it's basically I, like, this is the website and then these are like the drop downs. And so when you, I'm trying to do this backwards. <laughs> when you kind of like highlight, like scroll over this first tab, it does drop down and then it's there. But okay. like, hmm. you know, some things that you all could think about is like spelling it out instead of having the acronym maybe would be yeah. helpful because I don't yeah. know if everybody knows that, you know, like, and then I'm sure it like pops up. I don't know where else you would like, it could link off. I'm sure it links off your page probably or I'm not, not sure if it does. Yeah. But who who updates the sea life? Like with the new brochure is Deb Gardner out of my office. Mm -hmm. She uploads that, mm -hmm. so she has ability to do that. Yep. But if you wanted like something changed, like my my recommendation would be that it would live under the school committee drop downs with all the different committees, but then also like cross advertise it on your page so we can check on that too. Okay, um, so it is findable under the school committee link to answer that question. It's not only findable, but like you don't even have to click on the school committee header. Like when you just like scroll, if you're just scrolling over the top ones, they all drop down. What I'm gonna, what I just made a note to myself was was to get it spelled out because like until I was on the school committee, I did not know what the acronym was, and then. Um, and then check to see if it's on your page too so that they are both directing to the same spot because they like student people might be going to your website that might not click on the school committee site so we can have it listed in two different places is there another place you would go on it I don't, I don't know i think that's what, what the question that she had was was that it was on the um school can yeah. we find it under school committee i mean we could i don't know I don't know if it would need to reside anywhere else unless we wanted somebody. I mean, do we want our own banner going? <laughs> no, I mean, I yeah, think I don't think that's the right, yeah. right place for it. Okay. We'll take care of that for you. I'm going to move on to the next item. So this is something that I wanted to put on here, and I brought it up at the, at the uh, presentation I did. When, when I was getting that presentation ready, I read, and I had never noticed it before, and I don't even know if it's new, because I think this is um, updated since the last time I looked at it. The, so under the um, the uh, Rhode Island regulation that I, I don't even it's um, 200 RICR 2030 20-30-6 it says that one of the duties and responsibilities for the the, the lack is to um, <coughs> comment on let me find it I'm sorry. Comment and make available. Uh, the local or regional edu educational agency shall also provide 
the school and district improvement plans to the committee for comment and make available appropriate records and data as permitted by law. The public agency shall also support the committee and dis I don't know if this is the right one. I'm sorry. I know what you're looking for. Hold on, let me see if I can. It was something about um, findings from, I wish I had my presentation handy. Um, I thought I had it up here, but I don't. Here it is. Here it is. I found it. I'm sorry. The committee shall advise the school district for a regional program on matters concerning the unmet needs of students with disabilities. Com and this is what I wanted to focus on. Comment on improvement plans, including school support plans resulting from IDA Part B compliance reports, local compliance with state and federal laws pertaining to the education of students with disabilities, and comment on applications for federal and state funds and service advocates in partnership with parents for students with disabilities. I don't think we've ever done, we've never seen any compliance reports. Were you part of the school support visit that happened in spring of 2023, 2024? When was that? March of 2024. 2022, 2023? 2023, yeah. 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 So um, you would most likely have had to have been involved in that because they interviewed parents as part of that. Yeah, I, I personally, that was the last I'll have to ask Amanda, but yeah, you're, you're the only one, and Amanda, that have done a lot many of the things where we were involved in anything, but I don't think we've ever been involved in I don't these remember things. when that last visit. I have gotten like a call in the past, like um, having a randomly selected IEP and yes, yes, and yeah. having a discussion yeah. with somebody. Mm -hmm. Yes, about that, that would have yes. been the compliance report. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that had to be a good three years ago at least. 2022, I believe. 2022, yeah. 2023. Right before you came. It was it was my first year. Oh, your first year. Yes, that's yeah. right. And then I came in. I think it was before I was on the school committee. I don't, yeah. like, because I was elected in November of 22. That's when so, I was hired. Yeah, so it was, like, right around then. So probably. it was right before that's that spring. we did it. Mm -hmm. But, so, with that said, though, John, like, mm. like, for, so on those things, like, that was kind of some of the stuff that I was talking about of, like, the, like, unmet need stuff and yeah. the, mm. um, uh, like, things that maybe we are in, like, we're in compliance, but like things that you all know about, like state laws that you would like to see the district be doing stronger, right? You know, there's that's I think what that advocacy piece of this group, that arm is like that law piece is like, hey, this law says this. Like, are we doing it at all the schools? Are we doing it as best as we can be doing? You know, like, are we not just meeting the floor, but are we trying to aim towards the ceiling? Like that sort of stuff. I think is where you're feedback and advice would be really valuable and like it can give you voice in, in what we do and how the administration kind of moves forward and, and what the school committee does to support that. So I guess I don't know, what are these compliance reports? Is it like we came here and inspected you and you're not compliant? So that only happens every five years yeah. where the state comes in and then yearly. Like an audit, right? For an audit, memory? yeah. We have like yeah. A, so they call it a, stu a school support visit is what they call that. And then we have a report that comes out of that. That normally, I, again, I, I can I wasn't here, so I don't know what happened. But normally, that is presented the findings of that report. Yeah. I know that I've talked about it. Yeah. Like we had twenty seven issues. But you definitely talk, I, I, you talked more Breda about than I'd ever presented. heard last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we do well. talk about it. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure Breda presented I think the findings so at one of the CLOCs. I was there. Okay. Breda was here. She, yeah. It's sort of one of the requirements, so I'd be surprised if it didn't happen, as long as I'm sure Brenda good. did that. Yeah. And that's a compliance. And then about once a year, we get a compliance report about how are we meeting our 60-day calendar timelines and things like that. We've been 100% for a long time, um, or for a good bit of time. Um, so those are compliance. And as far as budgeting, I know I brought the CRP, and like this is kind of what I'm presenting of how we are typically spending it. <clears throat> and then, of course, added things that... I heard that you might want or need, um, so that's that. I don't know if you had like an exact like, hey, could you put this in the budget? Um, but I did present on what was in the budget. Remember the issue? I don't, and I haven't heard about it. I mean, I don't know if that's compliant. You know, with the consent decree, that there yeah, that was, was certain, a while ago. There yeah. were certain populations within the town that were like overrepresented. Disproportionality. Dis mm. Yes. Yeah. Did that ever get resolved? Well, that happens in almost any district. Um, so it's not completely resolved. We're still disproportionate in one area because it takes a while. You have to have a certain number for a certain amount of years. Um, I think I've identified the why, <laughs> and now we're working on, 
I, I feel like will, will not be disproportionate over time. So one of the ones in the past that you were disproportionate was discipline of students of special ed, but now that you're no longer disproportionate in that area. Um, Specific learning disability. Specific learning but disability for all. We've done a lot of evaluations, looking more closely been, at eligibility categories. So another big reason why Kendra, myself, or Julie are required to be at eligibility because we really understand the categories. There's also under why LDID was disproportionate, learning disability was disproportionate, is because we weren't finding other types of eligibilities, uh, as in st students on the spectrum um, that requires a clinical eval and there weren't a lot of clinical evals being done. We've done a lot of clinical evals in this past year, so now that category is more typical, therefore it's gonna bring down the LDID numbers and, le and create less disproportionality, things like that. So it's identifying patterns, um, also not understanding that, and this we weren't disproportionate in, but you can have an intellectual disability or you can have autism, but you also can have something called multiple disabilities, which is having um, an intellectual disability first and then autism or communication disorders, other things. So there's another eligibility label that was not being used at all here that we brought upon and saying it's really important. It's not so important to us, but it is important when kids get into adult service world. So really working on that together and making sure that we're doing eligibilities correctly has been a big thing. I could talk about that another time. I know I just gave you like a brief little thing, but we can come <coughs> back to you if you want. Yeah, I just thought that was like maybe there was like some kind of audit reports or something. That's mm -hmm. what it seemed like to me. And I'm not, I don't know if it, maybe that maybe I'm thinking of that incorrectly. And no, that's just the every five year thing yeah. that happens. Oh, okay. From the outside related to that, I think it's hard to know um, when to provide insights, right? Of, you know, so like um, we if we hear like at the end of the report, we kind of we can't help to think about what. Is right. needed, you know, and so like the same with the school committee. Like I mm -hmm. wouldn't know when in a process to, or you know, or like when to like. Um, some of it is like we just don't know, right? We're just mm -hmm. like regular humans that don't do school stuff, <laughs> uh, and so figuring out um, if there are spaces where, um, you know, parents of special ed students would benefit, like your programs. Mm -hmm. Like I think that that would be a good, like pathway here, you know, for us to be able to try to say, oh, like. You know, when I tried to access this, you know, we had these barriers, mm -hmm. or, or like, you know, uh, Kendra was amazing and helped me through this, right? To be able to see some of those points, like from a parent, um, and so I think that's some of what that is intended for too. But sometimes we don't know how to access that, so if there's mm -hmm. spaces, we would be glad to do that. Okay. And I'm speaking of Greta. I remember when she was here, and I'm repeating myself and, and repeating her. She suggested that at this first meeting, uh, CLAC meeting coming up with um, an agenda for like a, maybe a district-wide initiative, one or two, to sort of keep ourselves on task mm -hmm. for moving things forward. And so, wondering if in the next five minutes we could come up with something district-wide. You know, I always think of inclusion as, and that's always my personal agenda. Um, unified arts, sports, yeah. Yeah. across all the uh, the schools, I think is something that's very important yeah. to me as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we've started moving away yeah, from the word inclusion to belonging mm -hmm. a little bit more across Beautiful. the language everywhere because mm -hmm. it's one thing to be included, it's another thing to that you belong. Belong. Mm -hmm. So we really talk about. But I'm wondering if it could. What was the awareness data? Was so it? neurodiversity. I, yeah, I actually um, really quick. Um, Sid Sweeney at the high school has already started moving on. Um, hers is like a unified spirit day. We did the neurodiversity celebration week last year and it was great success or week last year. It was great. Um, so she sent out her week and the week I was thinking was just a week later. So I'm just gonna, I'm thinking of putting them all together. It sounds like she's already sent out messages all around too, so it's gonna be district wide. I think it's gonna be a big district wide mm -hmm. um, in March, late March. Mm -hmm. um, it's just in the okay. draft form right now, but I know we had parents come together last year, mm -hmm. and it was it was great. So I love it again. Mm -hmm. So I think like to what I heard from from what you were saying is like. Um, for the inclusion piece and like for unified sports, right? That's a great example of something that like might not be on Rachel's radar, like the highest level. Like it's I know it's on your radar, but that's not gonna be at the tip of the top of the list. But 
is something that maybe North Kingstown can do to improve. Um, like I know we're not at the top if we, as far as districts in the state, right? And so that is something that I can bring back to the school committee and say, hey, CLAC would like us to explore this. Like what are some of those avenues that we need to do to do that, right? Like what's our base? What are we offering right now? What are other districts offering? Like that is something that is tangible that we can, you know, look into, right? And so I think it's things like that, that like we, maybe know about or other districts are doing or maybe Rachel's seen in her other districts or whatever that would help students here and that are some of those unmet needs or gaps in what what we're doing and then kind of you know and not, not that things are quick but like identifying those things is the first part of of figuring out the path forward of what we can do so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you've done surveys through NK has, has there been a great response or a decent enough I'm just thinking like you know to, to you know, send out a survey to parents. What do you what, they what, want. what do you Mostly. want in your district? I haven't done one this like past year. I could say in general, the people that participate and come to meetings are the ones that complete the survey. Yeah, we've, we've, had, some, we've had some success um, with different ones that we've sent out for the school committee. Like not the like researcher in me. Like they're not statistically really significant, yeah. if you will, but. We've gotten information out of them. Like okay. we sent, when we were doing the equity vision statement, mm. we sent some yes. out and we got some pretty good Maybe feedback. Okay. And then we sent send as much as you want. one about the buildings and I got some pretty good feedback. So like, like again, it's not, but, even, like, but there's some information. It gives yeah. you something. It gives yeah. them an avenue to tell you at least, yeah. which I, I think, always I think, think is it's good. It's good to ask on your parents, you know, for, for all of our kids. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see the district mm -hmm. focusing in on what you care about? I mean, I think it's a realistic survey for, for all families. Mm -hmm. so. um, just kind of piggybacking on what Rachel said about the belonging part. Um, one of the other subcommittees, um, subcommittees I belong to is the DEI subcommittee. And um, when I applied for membership, I was very clear that I would really like to see AB DEI AB accessibility and belonging added to that. So um, we're, we're, we're not, we've got a little bit into accessibility. Um, I'm sort of alongside advocating through the building subcommittee with the changes that they have proposed for the new school. Um, it would be helpful though if there were other families. Um, I, I don't know a whole, if I have a whole lot of leverage since I don't have a child in the district now um so if anybody knows of anybody for whom you know accessibility is really a priority um feel free to share my my contact information and that can be brought to that meeting because some of what we do there it does overlap mm -hmm. with here and vice versa mm -hmm. yeah 100 mm -hmm. and i think that's where having the different school committee members sit and all of them helps because then we converge and we say okay like what's going on here what's going on there okay those are similar or we refer sometimes to each other so like you all could refer to the policy committee or the DEI committee could ask for your all's feedback on something you know so I think that's where we're trying to get people to move in that sense too um but I sit on the discipline one yeah. um, and there's a lot of DEI AB stuff that overflows into discipline that so also we do talk that about also that. overflows here. We just need to have here. like one yeah. giant yeah. committee meeting. Like, so that's called the school committee. <laughs> 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 but like have it designated as that rather than just like a night where, yeah, you know, like like your like a regular meeting where. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I yeah. think I think it's the district goals, and yeah. I think it's that that's where we're trying to like get you like voice and then bring it up because then we can say okay this is what this year's district goals are and like it's well informed from these different groups like I think that's where we're trying to move as far as like the hearing and, and incorporating piece so you're not wrong I put copies out of the state SEAC meetings and a copy of the description of our continuous services which has all the unions and description oh, thank of you. those are both out there I could not figure out where the staple option was though, so <laughs> they're disaggregated. It's not where it is on the machine. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move on because we are past time now. Um, are there any questions, comments, or feedback? <laughs> All right, and we're going to adjourn this meeting. And then, um, as always, we have our Facebook, which we talked about, and I will. Yeah, you could pass over. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I, we'll still stay on it, I think. But
but you could you're welcome to yeah, join of course. and be yep. reinvigorated maybe. <laughs> I don't mind at all. Yeah. Yeah. And we could even try to make a Instagram out of it. I don't really I don't even know how to do that. I'm yeah. so old now. <laughs> Facebook was my thing nine Hello. eight years ago. <laughs> Facebook's yeah. Yep, we're adjourned. Yep.